Hey guys, we're at 100%. <laughs> and this is Shannon with AVA Direct. Welcome to the live stream. And I'm Joe. And today we have a lot to talk about, a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> Sorry for my voice. Uh, <laughs> let's see what we can... See, Shannon's an opera singer in his spare time, and he just kind of screamed a little too much last night. So <laughs> you can just bear with us. We'll really appreciate it. Hey, don't tell people about my personal life. I mean, you Whatever be... I was screaming about is my business. The more comfortable you are with it, though, the better you'll get in practice. And then eventually we'll start seeing you in the big stages. Yeah, but, you know, last time someone told me something like that, I made myself very vulnerable. And look what happened. Yeah, I mean, it's, it can't be any worse than the crying game and sitting naked in a shower, but, you know. <laughs> Damn it. <clears throat> now that we're done discussing uh, my personal life, uh, first thing we have up on the uh, docket here is uh, Intel Z390 uh, leaked slash uh, announcement. Not really announcement, but uh, Z390 kind of popped up somewhere. We've had uh, some a lot of reports on it showing some of the new features. Basically, figure continuation of the... Uh, Z370 chipset. The only difference we saw thus far, now obviously this information, I don't have anything in DA at this time on Z390, so we're kind of safe with discussing this. We can only talk about the speculative rumors that have gone out. It shows that the chipset is going to have native support for PCIe Gen, or no, PCIe, uh, USB uh, 3.1 Gen 2, which means uh, 10 gigabit up Pretty to six cool. ports. Pretty cool in my opinion. So that means basically, Joe, we're going to have a native chipset versus add an add-on chipset. You know, from, a, from a perspective of the fact that, you know, you spec a lot of systems off for people, where do you think like a native chipset USB 3.1 Gen 2 implementation will actually help people? I mean, as of right now, I don't think it's really going to help people by much other than giving you an option to charge your smartphone with it. Um, unless you use a bunch of external storage maybe that uses USB 3.1C, but there isn't a whole lot of demand for devices out there that use the interface in the first place. It wasn't like when you had previous chipsets with the VR headset launches and you couldn't get some of the boards like Z97 to function with the headsets because there were power issues and then they came out with Z170 and it fixed a lot of that. So we're really not in a transitional period, I think, to really need it, but it's great to have. I'm not complaining. Well, with the power spec of USB 3.1, you have Oculus and you have Oculus sensors and whatnot at your this house. It's true. Do you feel that maybe having those native chipsets means now you wouldn't need the add-in cards you added yourself? Yeah, that's true. And now I'm gonna feel like I wasted $80 for nothing because I was impatient, but. I'm glad to help. Right. <laughs> if they solve the problem with me having to use, uh, with you only being able to use a certain amount of feet, you know what I mean? Because there's that challenge with Oculus, especially that uh, HTC Vive, of course, doesn't have. Good feet? job, HTC. Feet? What do you mean feet? Oh, the feet of the cable. Oh, you're so, like, use so many feet. I'm like, I only have two. Right? Yeah, I should have probably clarified, unless you know things want to get weird in that discussion talking about just feet, but we won't go there. I'm just going to look something up on Google. I'm out of this. Feel free. I mean, they, <laughs> they can't see the screen, so feel free. I mean, by all means, I won't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Um, you can only use up to 15 feet with each Oculus sensor before there's too much signal degradation, and then yeah. you have to look at amplifying that signal. And even if you amplify the signal, there's no guarantee. Sensors drop out randomly, and at the end of the day, you just end up wanting to throw your Oculus out of the window. So, But I've seen where you play your Oculus. You have no windows there, so that's safe. I have two now. Oh, yeah, it's that's it. it's that actually, tells you how long me and him hang out besides being here. Right. Well, I have to use the my daughter's playroom that's sectioned off of my house. So besides being enamored in a headset in the dark, um, when I pull my headset off, I'm reminded at, at all the, the feminine children's toys I have around me with a wooden kitchen in one corner and then a corner of stuffed animals and a mini trampoline in the other. So Please tell me you have like Legos all over the floor as you're playing like Room Scale VR. Um, no. No, but that I did. Would have been I, awesome I did almost trip over my cat two days ago, and she didn't <laughs> flinch. She just lay there like you're in my way, human. So well, that's cats in general. I know, but she's deaf, so she's especially smug in that regard. <laughs> so beyond that, it also uh, the the Z390 is speculative or uh, rumored to have Wi-Fi Wave Two AC, which means 160 megahertz transmission, um, really fast Wi-Fi capability integrated in the chipset, so that you won't necessarily need an add-on chipset. Do you feel Do you feel there's really a need for that? Because I feel like right now there's so many add-on chipsets that go to so many different boards. I haven't really seen any major issues besides killer besides some killer networks which have weird issues depending on how you have your network set up. Other than that, software related, yeah. What's the point of adding that feature? Do you feel it's tan a tangible feature to have on a chipset? I mean, yeah. that seems weird. Maybe they have some reason for it if it actually is a thing i'll tell you what for the people that are resource hogs with pci expansion it is especially useful because there have been quite a few times i've tried to spec out solutions for people and they have every single pci express card slot occupied and they're like oh <laughs> wireless well there's no room 
these boards will solve that problem, and that's great. The question is, A, how much CPU resource is that going to consume? And B, is it going to be tangible compared to dedicated cards? Yeah, I always worry about the uh, overhead versus having its own like its own codec or own ch like right. you know sound cards. You have your own codec versus having let's say it integrated in the chipset sure. where you're potentially using CPU. Perfect examples like RAID controllers, having an HBA versus having uh, the chipset or PCH control. There's a big difference as far as system resource loading. It's huge, huge, it's a huge difference. Oh, fantastic. Let me tell you, it's a fantastic difference. Well, one of the things, uh, when I was reading this, one of the things I kind of speculated or thought, you know, was kind of weird was you, you have this chipset, but yet if you look at Z370, if it's truly the next generation of it, Z370 was almost Z270 exact, just made for coffee lake. It felt just like it, right? Like even the boards looked the same. Everything looked the same. The feature set was the same. The only difference was supports 8th gen, supports 7th gen. And I feel like maybe... They had that push, and I hate to keep doing this. I'm not trying to like bash anyone, but when it comes down to it, I felt like Ryzen kind of put the hot poker to their neck and kind of said, "Hey, you know what? You're gonna, you're gonna basically, you're gonna lose some market share." So they're like, "Okay, we've got to release a new chipset to support this," and now we're gonna be, you know, now it's like, "Okay, now we're finally ready with these items." So now instead of this being the Z370 chipset, now they're like, "Well, we're gonna put out a new chipset to support these few items." I think it's just all a response to AMD and, and their forthcoming expansion with their technology and what they're releasing. Um, on time, might I say. I can't remember. I don't know how tentative AMD has been with their release, but it feels like it used to be the opposite. Intel used to come out with products, and then AMD was like, oh, whoops, got to come out with something. And now it's in, uh, Amazon, or, uh, AMD is Amazon. ahead of the race. <laughs> Amazon. AMD is ahead of the race in that regard. Intel is still trying to catch up in terms of the hype because AMD had just jumped on the hype train and kept going with it. I, I like the fact that AMD did hop on the hype train, so to speak, but they also, they've, they've done much better on second gen to manage the hype so that people right. are like, oh my God, why doesn't this overclock crazy? Right, clarifying I've, the details and such, right? I feel like they have put themselves out there as far as actually meeting some of what they're, they're saying with the products, whereas with Intel, they're always a clear winner when it comes to like IPC and individual single core performance, but right. they tend to not really get any hype anymore because they're doing the same, it's like the same thing, that whole TikTok, all that, it just kind of, it keeps compounding itself. It keeps becoming the same thing over and over and you're not really getting any tech innovation. Granted, we got more cores in mainstream now, but there is no brand new core. And I was hoping 10 nanometer, like uh, Canon Lake, things like that would pay dividends on that. And I think we'll see it as time comes, but- If it ever comes. <laughs> Well, maybe they'll just jump over it eventually like I we know. discussed last week. I mean, uh, no, and I'm being pessimistic, and I know I am. It's just I, I, I'm tired of getting my hopes up about stuff like that. So I'm, I'm just going to forget that it even exists and that it was even talked about, and then eventually it will pop up that there's a release date, and then they're going to stick to it. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, that thing that was supposed to come out like five years ago. Awesome. Yeah, cool. By the way, Chris Durup says, yo, what's up, Chris? What's up, Chris? Um, so I guess the next thing would be uh, with... Z, uh, with Z390, I guess you'd say. Um, do you feel this is an opportunity where Intel could potentially even refresh or possibly offer some new chip lineups? And what would be your wish list if, if Intel was to come up with a new CPU for 390? Were, what would you want to see? If they were to come up with a new CPU, I would want something that was going to go back to non-crap factory tin under the IHS so people don't have to deal it anymore. Uh, I would want better overclocking room. I would want there to be stronger Intel HD graphics options because it kind of felt like things came to a screeching halt with <laughs> HD 620 because they were like, oh, there's compatibility problems with Windows. Oh, because we're going to stop now. And that was it. Is I, can't, I cannot begin to express how frustrating it was with when 520 came out and people were running into all sorts of compatibility issues. And the only response people had to it and the fix that was available was, well, just get a dedicated card. Like, that, that's it. And um, I know there's rumors about Intel's GPU surfacing, and, and there's a couple of videos online of, of people claiming to have received those cards and, and had some semi-close-hand experience with it. But I feel like with Intel and AMD working together already, they should kind of narrow down the, the integrated graphics field a little bit better and, and steal that. Because that's, as much as I don't want to admit it, it's going to translate into the progress of consoles as well. And even though I'm, you know pro PC when it comes to gaming, 
anything to, to better and further the gaming industry overall, I'm all about. Well, that's the thing. I'm a gamer. I mean, hell, I posted today about being hooked on Clash Royale again. I mean, I play mobile games because I travel a lot. Right. So I don't always have time to play on my PC, although I do try to play on my laptop and sure. listen to it already spinning up just watching our stream. So yeah. Uh, so let's just say, you know, I have a lot of time in mobile gaming too. And I support <sighs> gaming across the board. I have a PS4. I have, you know, like you, you have pro, multiple right? consoles. PS4 Pro? Yeah. Cool. And I, I love that thing. But, you know, the thing is, a lot of times I will find that if there's a game that it has, but I have it on, but I have the capability to play it on PC, I'm going to play it PC. on PC because yep. I have so many more options and I also can play for free with you guys. It's just speed. Yeah. Playing for free is one big thing. Yeah. Uh, the speed. A... <laughs> I, I, I had probably like a good five or six year drought where I didn't have a PC. Um, you know, I, I was, I had, was living with my brother at the time and uh, bills were tight. So the only thing I could really afford was a console. That's why I'll always be thankful for consoles. Uh, but once I got back into PC gaming and I saved up for a while and I, I bought my PC and, and built it again, I could never go back because I, it almost felt like I was in a coma for six years because of the frame rate difference. And then when I jumped <laughs> back into a PC, I woke up and I was just, I died constantly, admittedly, because I wasn't used to the pace of things. Died and inside I, or just? A little, I mean, I died inside for the six years without a PC, but it, like Duke Nukem was the game that came out when I first rebuilt my PC and I died constantly playing it because you're not talking like floppy disk duke nukem like original right no i'm talking like duke nukem forever like the one that people oh, okay the one that people were so politically corrected and, and offended over because it was duke nukem and and people were like what do you expect it's, it's duke nukem that was duke nukem it's that like was... he's mr clean turned duke nukem yeah that went doesn't from, make sense went from i'm gonna spark the floors to hey hey go to the king baby like that that, that just... That's part of the whole franchise. I don't... Well, then again, you look at nowadays, everyone gets offended by everything for any reason without reason, so... Yeah, but that's probably a whole other live stream in itself. I, I feel like that's not a topic I want to touch on because next thing you know, we'll have people protesting our live stream because, you know, don't say Don't say touch on Shannon. Say discuss. Oh, this is going to go so well. <clears throat> um, so, the next, the next thing we wanted to kind of um, talk about would be um, we both have X299 at this point, right, Joe? Yes, we do. Okay, so we both internally questioned. We didn't have a channel at the time, otherwise we would have asked what the hell was going on when they released KB Like X. Yeah. Well, apparently the market agreed because before it's even a year old, KB Like X is dead. It's it's well dead coming soon. What? They're 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 EOLing both chips. The uh, but it's not even a year old. It tells you how much I know about those chips. The fact that I have to look at my screen and see what part numbers they were, which is the i5 7640X and the i7 7740X. But 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 Intel. But it's not. It's, 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 hey. How do you do that Intel chunk? Did you do? Did you fail? Yeah, there you go. Um, I, I feel like I've been bashing on Intel a lot lately, and I, I love Intel. Don't get me wrong, but this it, this is just poor timing for us to start live streaming, and then <laughs> Intel is just taking a dump all over everything they've done properly in the last ten years and trying to do things differently. Maybe they're just trying to get attention. Maybe you know the thing is for me the way I look at it is KB Lake X a lot it had a lot of criticism, and maybe it helped get people into the uh, HEDT or the high end enthusiast platform. Could be being the fact that you can buy like a quad core part. Even though it's dual channel, you still had a quad core part that was virtually identical to an i5, i7, like KB Lake processor. Right. So literally its name, KB Lake X, yeah. except it's on X299. So you could theoretically upgrade down the road and come to a higher end chip. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with them right behind that doing a six core Coffee Lake, they kind of just went and like, it was like EA with Maxis. They like walked him up to the hole and just plugged him in the back of the head. <laughs> She's like, it's okay. Just go into this room. This is where we're having it's the like, fundraiser. It's like, hey, KB Lake X, we love you so much. Look at that hole. See that? Pop. And they just dropped in. I feel like I feel like KB Lake X was doomed from the start, but they needed something to hold over and talk about because at the time, Coffee Lake hadn't come, hadn't come out. So mm. they were just kind of like, they, they, they positioned it as a transitionary part. And I just think not enough people, anyone who wanted a mainstream style proc, they were going like Z270 or even Z370 once it came out. Yeah, I, I feel like it's... no one's going to look and say like, yeah, I want a four core part for this massive HEDT system and I can only use half my RAM slots. No. Oh, and only one PCIe slot or two of them. No, and if they Everything do, else is dead. And the only time they do do four cores is if you have some sort of software that charges you per core in the license. Yeah. So you just go with high frequency processors and you go with two of them and they're four cores and then you do your thing. That's about. That's all I've ever really seen people do if they're going to limit cores anyway. It's it's less cost effective as, in terms of software licensing licensing at times. So, other than that, it doesn't make sense. Um, 
I think it really comes down to now my question becomes if it was a placeholder for Coffee Lake, is there really a place for that in the market? I mean, I understand they did it strategically, but for someone like us, I don't really think we, I don't know if we ever really even sold, but maybe a couple, a handful of uh, KB Lake X processor based systems because most people who would ever use that kind of thing were definitely more apt to use a mainstream platform, wouldn't you agree? Right, and most people that were buying the Cabby Lake X, it was just because. Not that they didn't need it. And, and a lot of times I would ask, you know, are you using it for gaming? Yeah, a little bit, ga a little bit of gaming, um, a little bit of light Photoshop use maybe. And I would explain to them kind of the pros and cons and the price differences. And it was, well, I have the budget, so I'm gonna do it. Okay. Did any of them mention that they were getting that because they were planning to upgrade or not a chance? No. I had a feeling it no, was probably nobody the case. Planned, nobody planned on upgrading. And that's, and that's something a lot of people mm -hmm. will do. They'll throw money at a PC for the purpose of longevity so they don't have to deal with it for a while. And I mean, dude, I've received calls from people that have purchased systems back from like 2009 and they're like, hey, system's still going strong, just long the tooth, time to get something new. It's a, it, it really is what it is. It's a personal computer and the experience and the requirements and the desires out of everybody is, is exactly that. It's personal. And I just don't think Cabby Lake X was something that fostered expandability. I just feel like it was never, even though they that was, when I've discussed with them, that was some of the intentions they had. I feel like it was never really delivered in such a way that, hey, you can get this now but you can also upgrade in the future. And also the other problem is- unlike, It wasn't marketed that way at all, was it? Not really. No, it was always cutting edge, forget AMD, hey. And that new word, extreme multitasking, because you, or no, oh, I'm sorry, extreme megatasking, megatasking. Megatasking. Yes, I, that's, that's a thing. I saw it like in a slide deck and I'm like, nope, we're not saying that ever. <laughs> so, Basically, the next question comes because I, it comes from the fact that I've dealt with a lot of motherboards. I've dealt with like a topology of motherboards, layouts, all that stuff. How do you feel this affects a motherboard manufacturer who's told by Intel, they get a white paper from Intel and it says, your board has to support the ability to switch and recognize using only these right hand slots and X amount of PCIe lanes if you use KB Lake X. Otherwise, it's gotta be intelligent enough to notice that if you swap to another one, everything's unlocked for it. I mean, doesn't that seem like a, a ton of engineering and R&D and money that possibly was lost by these board partners just because there are these motherboard manufacturers like Asus, Gigabyte, ASRock, all them that built these boards specifically for this purpose. And now Intel's like, yeah, those chips, yeah, remember those? Yeah, not anymore. And they just kind of shove them away. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive waste unless it's something you feel that they've known for the long time. Like they know the master plan of this and this is just a piece of the puzzle yeah. and it doesn't bother them. And for all we know, they could have already have done all the R&D up until the point to where uh, it's going to be end of life for this era of technology, I guess you could say. And it doesn't bother them at all. And they could have just have very well put very little amount of engineering and R&D in it because it's not the focus. Yeah, but know. to be able to enable, just, so just because a motherboard layout is, uh, in order to enable that switching technology so that it can switch from one to the other, it's the same kind of switching technology you design so that if you put one graphics card versus two, mm -hmm. and imagine like Z370 or... Uh, Z270 or what have you, where you've had those boards before, like your Z, what, did you have Z170 before or P, uh, Z97? Z97, actually. Okay. Z97 actually was the Devil's Canyon CPU. Yeah, you had those little rectangular chips between each, and that actually is what separates the lanes so that if you put a second card in, right. it drops the top one to eight. Yeah, so, so it doles out the bandwidth for it. So with that being said, obviously they have to have similar or possibly even more advanced switching technology to switch between the um, single or dual channel setup to a quad channel setup. Not to mention, you gotta remember that uh, Skylake X had, uh, has FIVR, whereas KB Lake does not. So you remember I told you about the issue I had where I swapped a chip from one to the other and blew a proc up. Yeah. And basically I, when, I, when I asked about it, they were like, yeah, make sure you clear the CMOS before ever swapping a CPU. Why? Because it had to tell the difference. Otherwise, when you first fire it, before it can detect what chip is there, it will actually kick up and your VCCIN, let's say it's 1.92 volts, that suddenly becomes your V core on a KB Lake X chip. So that KB Lake X chip goes, oh cool, pop. pop. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we actually did that in unison, that was pretty good. <laughs> it literally will just blow it up and then you're like, well, I'm out of chip, cool. Preposterous. Thanks, motherboard. I mean, and worst <laughs> thanks, case scenario. Mo thanks, mother. Board. Motherboard. Wow. Not like not like mother cube, motherboard. Yeah. Wow, dude. <laughs> but, the wow. worst part is it can also, like it can also, I've seen in one case where it actually popped a VRM and that's like, once that happens, it's like, well, the whole integrity of the whole system's gone now. So 
I mean, when you do that, it's like I, I think the far-reaching implement, uh, far far-reaching implications of having the technology to be able to support FIVR versus non-FIVR, mm. things like that. I feel like that is a really big difference and really um, makes it much harder to engineer a board, which means there's a ton of engineering investment in these boards. And I wonder if these motherboard manufacturers actually made it back or if they saw enough KB Lake X sales to actually make it a relevant option. I mean, obviously we're, uh, we're a cross-section of specific consumers and there's other cross-sections out there. We. I can't, I can't do that. I love how my chat, once again, is not doing the thing. Yeah, mine still, it just shows people that joined and that's it. So I've been thinking the discussion's completely dead, but your screen shows that it's, there's people actually speaking, so. Well, that was, <laughs> yay Chris, me. that was Chris going, yay, because we said hi to him. Right. Because, you know, we're nice people. We like to say hi to everybody. Yeah, you just got to say hi to us. We're a friendly bunch of folks. Come on by, see your BCs. We'll build you one. <laughs> By the way, if you guys have any questions, comments about what we're talking about, or even something different, shoot it over in the chat, and as soon as I see it, or as soon as Shannon shoots it over to me, yeah, Shannon, Shannon, go figure. That doesn't get confusing at all during the day. They have um, their own part number. I'm Shannon squared. Yes. Or cubed. Wait, no, squared. Not cubed. Cubed would be three. It's similar to a graphics card part number. We Julian! Oh, wait. Did, did I miss something, or what are we doing? I don't know. Somebody wants us to make them a sandwich. It depends on what sandwich, man, because if it's a real simple sandwich, uh, sure. If it's real complex, I'd rather just go buy it. Make me a sandwich. Oh, that's John. He's the he's a storage editor for Tweaktown. It's okay. We oh, hey, John. Oh, Mo's here. Hi, Maureen. <laughs> so I guess we've kind of covered most of the details of the wonders that are KB Lake X, which is AKA chip that no longer exists as of the final purchase date of uh, figure later this year, uh, you'll no longer be able to uh, do anything or buy those, which uh, apparently from what we're seeing, at least from our end, not a lot of people were adopting them. We saw a lot of Skylake X X299 systems, uh, actually surprisingly so, with how high cost some of those like 7960X and stuff. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of those higher chips go, I mean, insane through some of the orders we've we've had come through, so that's kind of nuts. I mean, really? I kind of assumed like we'd have more like 7900X as a more consistent, you know, like right around that range, kind of like the 6950X. Right. You know, right around the $1,000 or right around that area, like we get a decent amount of orders. I was really surprised how many people adopted like the 14 core and up. I've seen quite a few of them come through. Um, still a little surprised. Some people don't like like the AO, so they stick with air cooling on a chip like that. That just is asking for like pain. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> um, what's up, John? He said, hi. Um, hi. 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 Hey, you guys. So, <laughs> Hi. I guess the next thing would be if I could find my mouse pointer. Yay, 4K. Um, oh, we're, we're going to discuss the behemoth, aren't we? Yes. the uh, I would say the gigantic elephant in the room, but our sample has not been here yet because I had not requested it at the time of this. Otherwise, well, actually, I don't even know. Uh, who ha who has a sample? Would it fit? Hold on. Would it? I got to see. What, can we? Brooke, can you even see Like, if I put my hand up here? No, your hand's cut off. Okay. Is that how tall it is? It's uh, this? It's actually more than that. Are you kidding Just me? Just so you understand, let's pretend like this is here. Let's say the Corsair 1000D. Let's call it the big black elephant 1, in the room. 1000 Ds. Sure. Sure. Now we know Joe's fantasy. Now, when we're talking about this case, let's imagine it was sitting here in front of us. You cannot see up here, but it is tall enough that even I would have, even I would never have trouble with my big bear paws building in this thing. It can take two systems. It's just ridiculous. Um, two systems? It fits two systems. It fits a mini ITX system and a full ITX system. Now, that's not necessarily then, something new. because And there's, there's I.O. panels for each one? Well, the thing is, that, like the I.O., a lot of it's in the front. But what's weird is the uh, I.O. for the ITX, the mini system that's on top of the PSU cover, is actually in the rear. The power button, that's the only part of it that's like in a different place, which is kind of odd because if I have a system like that, I'm not going to want to reach behind my behind my PC to turn it on. No, that no, just seems the accessibility of the power button in the front ports is really important for me at least. But all the front ports are there. But the way I the thing I like about it, and they're marketing it actually the right way, is the uh, you can have like a streaming PC inside your PC. So, so you have a PC mini ITX board. So PC inside your PC. Uh, PC exception. It's, yes. it's a PC PC. PC 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 a PC it's, in your PC. It's a PC. PC, PC. I feel like I'm really going to date myself by saying, yo, dog, I hear you like PCs. Oh, so you put a PC in such a PC, PC so you yep. can PC while you PC? Yeah. PC! God, this is where you needed your soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Let's see. This is true. 
Um, so that thing, it's basically when you when you take this is. It's a perfect example of when you take a when you take a PC case and turn it to eleven. I mean, we definitely pay attention to this. Goes to eleven. I love cases. I, I love you know that I have a basement full. <laughs> I love cases. Cases are awesome, and I feel like now the question comes: when is too when is big too big? Um, there is no such thing as too big, uh, especially when it comes to workstations and towers. And Shannon's real excited to hear that, aren't oh, you? Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> and because I, especially when you're going to build liquid cooling systems, and you'll always have that one person, myself included, that if you don't have any size requirements for your computer and you just want to throw the best liquid cooling hardware that you can in it, those these cases, like that thousand D, is going to allow you to do that, and it's going to be really interesting to see how that works out. Well, I for one cannot wait. Oh God. So this thing, just, uh, just so you understand, it's not the very first system to have multiple, actually there's multiple along the way that have uh, done multiple systems in one case. There was like back in the day, Danger Dan duality cases, things like that where it's been potential. But the most recent one is the Fantex Intu Elite, which you've seen that one, the gigantic monster Love Fantex cases, one. man, love them. I, I use the Evolve for my system. And the Intu Elite is that one that came in that, like look like a musician's case. Yeah. And yeah. it's awesome, but it's a thousand damn dollars. I mean, Whereas the 1000D is like five, six hundred bucks. So that's ironic. It's 1000D and it's not thousand dollars. Should be. A, so a, maybe that's not. The should be a dollar per about. D, maybe. Like the dollar per D ratio is is about half. It's like in the same market as SSDs. You're really stuck on the D S thing, aren't SSDs? you? SSDs. I'm just. I I don't understand. So is SS like super, where does it super come D? from? Maybe I'm ignorant. Where does the D come from in the Corsair series cases? What does it stand for? Desktop. Thousand desktop. George, I hope you're watching. I'm asking really all the right you're... questions here, George. We need answers. Okay. Now! I actually asked him, I was like, hey, if we wanted you to like, you know, Skype in, he's like, maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> he probably has seen us already and he's like, I don't want to be part of this hot mess. I can't, it is, it is absolutely a hot, sweaty mess. And I bet my, sh my forehead is hella shiny right now. Actually, I don't think it's that bad. Does oh, he look super shiny? Just wait. Do we need like a like all powdery thing? You're going to bring in blotting wipes? Sweet, because awesome. I need blotting wipes, because I am a big, sweaty, hairy man. Well, there you go. Okay, so just to give you an idea of the ra radiator support, the front can do dual 480 radiators. What? So dual 4x120. That's sweet. I mean, that, well, it's kind of ridiculous, but at the end of the day, it's awesome. But ridiculous is kind of, you know, our wheelhouse in terms of... Well, I was about of, to say, ridiculous is kind of what we do, so... Yeah, you, know, you remember the thermal take case that we did for a company last year. It was the one that you actually worked on when you were at thermal take. Yeah, it's yeah. Got, it's got the two side pieces that you can attach to it. Yeah. That was sweet. Zach built that one. The P7, yeah. Yeah. The core P7. That thing, that thing was pretty extreme, and I'm just surprised that, like, with the way that thing's put together and the way we had the hard tube going between every side... Mm. I love the fact that we can ship things so well, but even I was a little surprised that thing was able to ship the way it was. Well, dude, I, wor I worked with a local case company, and I basically gave them the dimensions that the case was, the dimension we needed the box to be, and then what we did, which was real particular, was we found a way to secure it to the crate. So that was nice. So what you're saying is we engineered a thing. We, we did a thing for an engineering of a wooden thing. There you go. Now, dual 480s on the front. Top can do four, a 420 radiator. Mm. And then even in the rear, instead of being like 120, 140-ish, you can go all the way up to a uh, 240 rad. In the rear, and that's internal? In the rear, inside. Wow. Well done, Corsair. Now, the best part about this, and this is something we're going to pull up a quick video here, is uh, they have ball-bearing slide-out trays. Like, imagine you had an old-school uh, desk where the, where the keyboard slid out. And you're talking about motherboard trays, right? No, no, no. These are all the rad trays. So you can build the rads oh. into the system without having to, like, pull all the panels off. You see, I don't know how I feel about those. Because uh, there's about three different cases that have had those rad trays, and I just, I, more of the time, I want to remove them. Your Fantex had one. I, my Fantex had one, and I removed it, because there's a small amount of space in between the tray and the top, and then the air gets trapped, and then instead of a PC, you have an easy-bake oven. Except it's not an easy-bake oven. It's an oven of death, and it kills all your components. So I just ended up sealing it all. Well, I'll tell you. With the, with the 1000D, from everything I've seen, all the Ds in this thing is super cool. I mean, it has plenty of space to cool all the Ds. Yeah, you like those cool Ds, don't you? Better than warm ones. Just <laughs> I mean, if we're going to take choice here, let's just let's go, let's go the right way. Sure. Um, <laughs> there is no wrong way and, and with the, a cool D. The, the cool part is... There's your new marketing slogan, Corsair. I hope you use it. <laughs> keep all your Ds cool at the same time. All your Ds are belong to us. 
<laughs> I feel like this is I feel like this is going just as bad as I expected. <laughs> um, I don't know why I expected that is that is the new good. This this is like I think this is the mo for our uh, live stream going forward is just finding the worst way to represent a product at this point. <laughs> finding the most awkward way we could be like, hey, Corsair, check this out. Right. I mean, is it really that surprising, though? No. I is mean, it? we've had, what, is this our third one? Yeah. It's our third one, and we're just getting started. We're getting old. Yeah, oh. we're, we're getting old. I'm old as dirt. What does that make me? Old as lint. I'm out. I can't, I can't I do even. I, I, can't, I can't approach this any I'm further. I'm just trying to be as appropriate as possible. Those slide out trays for the radiator, by the way, can actually be swapped for different sizes. They have like all the way up to 200 mil fans, things like that. So there's that's nuts, dude. There's a lot of possibility in that. And I mean, I think that I, I understand what you're saying because I've seen the ones that slide out, but none of them have been done in this kind of implementation I've seen. Yeah. When it comes to like the uh, slide out trays with ball bearing, uh, with ball bearing slides, that's mm. actually. I think is going to be probably one of the coolest features of that case because mm. when you're building such a large liquid cooling system, right? The worst thing is trying to. You've you've put radiators inside cases. Oh, we did the one in your previous case before your Fantex. Remember trying to screw it through the fan into the radiator? Then you realize how much you hate your life. Then you kind of just swallow your pride and sadness and everything else, and then just decide good enough is good enough. I don't think it's a coincidence. The last two cases I built a liquid cooling system, and I didn't like the way that the radiator mounted or that didn't fit at all. I made it fit by modding the case. Every single liquid cooling system I've built so far, even the very first one I built, I've had to mod the case. And how many, how many, how many parts did we cut out of that Fantex case to make everything fit? At least four. And how many parts did we uh, remove the stamping uh, impressions to make it fit? Uh, about two, and then I ended like up the whole top. That's right. I pulled the top radiator tray out of the Fantex. I bridged the gap, and then I bolted it to the top of the case so I could direct the airflow right out of the case. And it kind of made a difference. And I'll actually give a plug to uh, Jim Weiss over at Clockwork because he's the one that helped me mod the top of my case and the top panel. It looks really sick. I'm going to have to take a couple of photos at some point in the live stream. And uh, I'll have uh, Brooke show a couple of slides the next time because it's, it's So you're going to take photos well during this live stream? I mean, I can. Like, you want to live stream me taking photos and then I can take the photo and then we can show the photo at the next live stream? We can show the photo of you taking a photo of it's, a photo. It's a photo stream. Photo stream, you mean photoception or what, what I mean, it could be photoception. So you make me think of soda stream when you said photo stream, but just saying. Now I'm thirsty. <laughs> I feel like this happened for a reason. <laughs> that was Reminder, Shannon. a Coca-Cola ad in the making. Reminder, Shannon, don't spit water on your laptop. We don't need any more problems. I mean, you can. At least then you'll be able to test the resilience. Oh, well, it's not. Not during the live stream, at least. It's insane in the membrane. <laughs> Why is this happening? Reasons. And then, uh, okay, now we have French doors on the rear section of the 1000D. The massive radiator cooling fitment was not it. You have gigantic French doors that cover all of your cable management, a Commander Pro, which you're familiar with. Right. One of them, which covers six whole fans, right? Right. There you go. You can actually see it now live in the screen. Right. So basically that thing, it plops open and you have one Corsair Commander Pro, which supports six fans. So let's say you Y split wow. off each of those. You're going to have 12 fans, and that covers about half of what the case can hold. Right. That thing holds, I think it's something ridiculous, like 20 plus fans. Oh my God. So literally, you're daisy chaining. I think when they showed it, they, they, there was, they, they had said they did three or four Commander Pros to control all the fans that they were showing in it. Right. Because you know, we saw kind of this case uh, shown. We, we did, yeah. It was kind of lightly tapped on a little bit. <laughs> Now, I, I don't. I want to uh, revert back real quick to liquid cooling because uh, Frankie has a question about liquid cooling. Hi, Frankie. Um, what's the probability of liquid cooling systems leaking? Very low if you use the right tools and you use the right products. Because like anything else, you have cheap products and you have high quality products. And if you go the cheap route, you'll get cheap results. So you yeah, know, you play, get what you pay for. So right. To speak. Exactly. Exactly. So um, and we have a pretty rigorous quality control process as well as the way that we package liquid cooling systems. A lot of times, to be completely transparent, what we charge for shipping liquid cooling systems uh, is not actually what we end up spending in materials to ship liquid cooling systems. Oh, because man. at the end of the day, we want to make sure that it gets there to you safely. But so yeah, um, as long as you go the quality route with liquid cooling materials, they're really never going to leak. I've never had a system on me leak just from sitting there. It's usually if I move it or if it's dropped, which luckily I never have. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was quick, just yeah. saying. Um, and also it comes down to how careful and meticulous you are when you're building it. Whether even our own internal team, we go through a lot of steps to make sure, you know, different levels of leak testing along the process, and then also loading it with pressure, to putting it under heat load with pressure to make sure right. that there's no seepage or leaking, because even the best quality components, sometimes maybe you cut an O-ring. I mean, how many times have you seen that where like an O-ring gets screwed up and you don't know it, but you find out really quickly once you have it under load and it starts getting pressure. Right, and you know what? We never had a huge issue with um, any of the O-rings in soft tubing. It was when hardline tubing first premiered and that was something you were learning. That was a learning curve for a good year, it felt like, that manufacturers, all manufacturers, everyone was suspect of this scenario to where those O-rings were just utter garbage on oh. everybody's hardline fittings, it felt like. You know, it's not like, you know, you put together a hardline system and then you come back the next day and it's in a puddle of its own coolant. That, that never happened. I'm never going to say that happened to me, ever. No, not AKA, once. AKA first avalanche I worked on. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Look, it's a white puddle. I wonder how that happened. Okay. Time, time, to, time to change parts. No, do, do you remember that? It was the one that, that was R&D system. That was when we were doing R&D on it and we came in and I remember I looked at it. And I'm like, oh, when did we paint the back plate on the graphics card white? That's not paint. And it was still running. <laughs> and I'm over at my desk just sitting there and Joe goes, why is it leaking ever? I'm like, haha, real funny. He's like, I'm serious. And I'm like, and right about that point, I start to feel the heart palpitations, you know. I start to kind of do the whole... Heavy I breathing. A, I might need a pacemaker. And I'm like, sure, Joe's screwing with me. I walk over, look, and go, everything's white. No, This is bad. You're entire, like, you're, all of your face muscles just sank. Like, you just had an immediate stroke. Because just... <laughs> I was like, I'm going to leave this to burn in overnight because this thing's running awesome. Well, burn apparently... in what? In hell? Because that's not too far from an accurate statement. That, that was probably one of the... Uh, First times you realize those specific fittings, I'm not going to name names or shame anyone. We're just going to say those specific fittings are no longer used by us anymore. Yep. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's important for you to do R&D before you release a final product. Yeah, that's why we do a lot of testing internally. we got to make oh, yeah. sure... Sometimes too much, but I don't think there's such a thing, truthfully. Distribution block during a flight. Ouch! Oh, Chris sorry, Drove, Chris. Chris Drove says he uh, had that happen with a distribution block during flight. You've seen those distribution uh, yeah, manifolds? Yeah, 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 Those man. things are sick. Man, that's awful, too, because it's not like you can go out and get a new one, especially if it's custom. Yeah, if it's custom built, like, you're, you're that's bad juju. That's bad times. That's one of those moments where you just go, oh, I'm done with this. Yep, I quit life. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's over. Um, wow, that is rough. But... Beyond that, I mean, uh, the French doors on the rear. That's really sick. That is a new concept. A really awesome and new concept, might I add. And other than that, I mean, that second system is going to be sitting right on top of your PSU cover. I feel like with the space, because they have like a cover going over that, so you can't really see the second system. So it's system and system. And they also have the ability to vertical GPU placement, because you know everyone has that now. Mm. So I was looking at one of the custom builds they did, and it was all hard tube liquid cooled. And you couldn't see the second board, but you could see it through the rear because it's laying flat mm. versus the vertical system. Do you really feel, from a customer standpoint, if, um, do you really feel that there has been any demand at all for two systems in one? No, none. I think it's just, I think it's something to attract people. Like, it's something different. So now I'm interested about it. Which I can give Corsair, you know, A for effort and creativity. I just don't know how that's going to work unless... You are a streamer, because a lot of streamers still do separate systems, one for streaming, one for gaming. That makes sense. But you could always still build a single system that is capable of streaming and gaming. So it's that you can approach it two ways. It depends on what your flavor is. I just don't think it's going to be a situation of, man, I don't want to buy two systems, because <laughs> then I get two cases. Where am I going to put that? Well, I have a solution for you, sir. So that's a one-off. Otherwise, anyone it who is. just anyone who buys the 900D right now, which we sell, actually surprising a lot of those. We sell a lot of Obsidian cases, so, actually. I recommend Corsair cases very highly, and they're probably one of the most recommended cases for me next to Fantex. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think uh, Corsair makes some very solid quality cases. I think they've also made some weird cases, like remember the ammo box looking case with the little flip up reset button thing? Yeah. Or and, do we just not talk about that one? <laughs> well, with the Vengeance C70, right? No. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was the C70, and it was, I remember, oh. I remember seeing that case when it came out, because back in, like, circa 2009, when people were modding cases, they were putting those, those covered army switches as power buttons on their cases, because everyone's like, oh, look, I can mod cases. Oh, like the covered toggles and stuff? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, and then Corsair came out with it, and I was like, oh, they thought that was, a, they thought people liked that. Look, I got to flip a thing to flip my switch. Awesome. Right. Man, the roof caved into my house and poured water all over my PC. But now that the power switch is covered, I'm safe. 
<laughs> and, I'm uh, a practicality guy. Like, I don't go for things for looks unless it's RGB. Like, I have a full RGB kit in my PC that can do all the unicorns, okay? All the unicorn colors you can think of. But my theme is Umbrella Corp from Resident Evil, and I only use red and white. It's a practical, I'm a practicality kind of guy. So what you're saying is all that time we spent making those RGB fittings fit in your system were a waste because you did red and white single anyway? Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't it? <laughs> That's great. I'm glad I wasted all that time outside of work to help you for no oh, reason. We got the tube together, Joe. Look. Oh, the wires broke off. Damn it. <laughs> How many times do we do that? For the, oh, you mean for the, uh, <clears throat> the hard line yeah. uh, LEDs. For the thermal take hard line RGB fittings. And that I, was a rough night. It was a very rough night. Um, it was. So Chris Durup kind of... Uh, kind of came up with something or uh, said what I was really thinking, which is he said that was a nightmare to Jim Weist and him. So, cause mm -hmm. he worked with him on, I think the manifold for that. Yep. And I could only imagine when that thing leaks, imagine being like on a flight and you're, uh, you get to where you're going and your PC, the manifold had leaked. That would be a complete joke. I would, I would, I would die. I wouldn't, I would just want to go home. And like looks, you'd land to do whatever you got to do. And you just look at your PC and just be like, can I get a connecting flight back home, please? Looks like Ryan saying hi to you. What's up, Ryan? Ryan White. How's it going, man? I went to uh, school for Ryan down in Columbus. Yay! Yeah. Columbus! I think I've been there once. Columbus. Lots to do. Lots to do there. I went there for like the fair. Which one? The Ohio State Fair. Oh, the Ohio State Fair, yeah. And then yeah. they have Community Festival as well. It's coming up in a couple of months. Wow. Which is really nice. There's a lot of things going on here. I'm just too busy. I don't realize half of it. Right. And since we're on the subject of Columbus, I also want to give a shout out and a plug to Able Gamers, who, oh, yeah. uh, as far as I understand, they helped work with Microsoft to help develop this new controller that allows people with disabilities to be able to game. So I have a huge amount of respect for them for even considering that as something that needs to be uh, drawn attention to. So... Accessibility for gamers, I think, is a very, very important thing for all of us. The fact that, you know, we, we always try to be super inclusive when it comes to the gaming environment, unless you're yelling at someone because you're trying to kill them in PUBG or something. Sure. Otherwise, we try to be super inclusive, and I think one of the biggest things is accessibility. I feel like, you know, that's something actually, once again, a shout out to our friends over at Logitech. They gave, I think it, when I looked at it, it was hundreds of pieces. Curtis over there worked with the guys at Microsoft to help develop proper gaming equipment and Logitech was a big part of making that happen. Yeah. And I, I have a massive amount of respect for that because you know what? While I myself don't need that kind of equipment, I can see where the level of fulfillment I get from gaming, just like I know you've told me you do as well. Right. Imagine if you're unable to have the same tactile response from your PC oh, like I know, we dude. have, because we know. have full functionality. So we're really uh, we're really lucky in that account. Sure. And to be able to see people now engaging the gaming community for those that don't have the same abilities that we do to yeah, be able to even be part considering of it. it. That's really awesome. I it's think that's, huge. I think that's awesome. And that says a lot about our community as, as a whole. Faith and humanity restored. At least a few ticks. Yeah, quite a few ticks. <laughs> okay. Now we get to talk about, yeah, let's segue from games or uh, into games. We're now going to talk about some uh, wonderful leakage that happened. And no, we're talking... Uh, that's <laughs> never wonderful. E3 game leakage. Ah, got by, it. By your good friends at Walmart. <laughs> because, you know, Walmart leads all things, including strange occurrences with people. We need you to sign this NDA, no problem. Post it. If you ever want to see a kid dragged from a leash, go to Walmart. Just saying. If you ever want to see the terminology of a body tattoo, go to Walmart. <laughs> Full body tattoo yes. on someone that should not have a full body tattoo. If you ever want to see a human chia pet. Walmart. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, so with that, Rage 2 looks pretty amazing. We actually found a gameplay trailer. Uh, Bethesda, after everything happened, they had some really funny stuff. They have a gameplay trailer that went out uh, live. Let's check that out right now. When the asteroid hit, billions were gone in the blink of an eye. Tribes rose up. Alliances formed. Territory was conquered. There was no one left alive to tell you no. And in this wild, wide open place, if you wanted something bad enough, it was yours for the taking. You see, in a world where there are no rules, insanity rules.
Wow! We're now deaf. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but I have to say that the name Rage is ironic because that's exactly what I felt after the first one came out because it was absolutely nothing like what they said it was. Well, nothing. Let's, let's face it. E3 gameplay trailers. I mean, let's not forget, once again, the gigantic peak elephant in the room, No Man's Sky. Or there's also Watch Dogs. Oh, God. Yeah. And then don't wow, forget. you went that far. Oh, let me go farther. Aliens Colonial Marines. Oh, I that, have that. That oh. game was so disappointing that I bought it with a gift card I got for Christmas, and I still felt like I had buyer's remorse after I played it. The only redeeming quality that game had was when you shot your weapon, it actually sounded like the machine guns. They pulled the exact sound effect from Aliens. So I just remember I, I ended up hanging out with my brother and playing that game, and I would just sit there and shoot at a wall just to hear the sound effects of the gun. I was like, <laughs> And you're like, wow, this is worth $60. It was. It was pow, worth every pow, penny. Pow, pow, I, I didn't mean pew, to, pew, pew. Didn't mean to steal your impressions, but what are your impressions of Rage 2? Uh, I feel like it's, uh, it has potential to go either way. I feel like it's either going to be really awesome and it's going to be like what Mad Max should have been but probably won't be, or it's going to be a whole lot of desert that you can go free roam in and uh, basically have a, not a lot to do. I mean, it's, it's tough to say because Bethesda builds beautiful games with all kinds of awesome bugs you get to find. That they do. So uh, it's kind of like, I feel like always with Bethesda games, whether you're talking, uh, you know, people getting stuck in the door in Skyrim or, you know, whatever it may be, spending seven and a half hours building a character you'll never actually use. Or Fallout 4 grabbing something off the ground that had no marital value and you just start to float in the air and then draw to your death. Or once again, Skyrim. Monster, or, uh, the giant clubs you and you end up falling off your space and you go, well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Or there's the dragons in very small spaces. Or dragons flying backward. Yeah, there's that too. But that's the, it's, it's like a treasure trove of like, it's a, it's almost like playing, a, how do you go searching for stuff? I can't remember the damn term for that. Minesweeper? No, mine, Minesweeper, what's wrong with you? Um, uh, when you're going, scavenger hunt. It's almost like a, a scavenger, scavenger hunt, scavenging. to find, except yeah. you don't have a list. You just got to make your own list of things you found. Yeah. And now that YouTube's prevalent, everyone makes li everyone makes their wonderful videos about how horrible a video game is because you find all the weird bugs and crap that you can run into. Right. Yeah. I, I bricked my new Vegas save on the PS3 because I got to the, the Brotherhood of Steel missions, and I tried to proceed with the Scribes missions and the Knights missions. I did both of them right at the point where it's supposed to switch over to only do the other. And I would go up to both of them. they both be like, come back in a little while. And there was nothing I could do. I tried killing myself. I tried killing whole towns. I tried murdering everything inside. I tried walking in naked. Nothing fixed it. So I just stopped playing. And then out came New Vegas for the PC with the trainer and the fixes for it. And I basically had to code my way through the completion of that game because it just would not stop crashing. How, how was one of your solutions to go in naked? How was that a solution to I don't move know. on in the story? Because uh, at the time, my girlfriend, who was now my wife, said, maybe there's an item you are carrying that the code is bugging out, and it's not. I'm like, that's a fair point. I will try that. So I walked in naked. I came out, and I was ambushed by, like, three raiders and died immediately because I had no weapons or armor. is what yes. you're saying. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Jay, Jay Chen is actually, uh, what's up, Jay? He's from PNY. He said, Hello. Uh, <laughs> he said, are you guys uh, going to put future streams on Twitch? We're actually working on multi-streaming. So within the next couple of weeks, we will have Mixer, Twitch, along with a few others so that you guys can watch depending on where you want to go in case Bookface isn't your thing. Because yeah. uh, a lot, I know a lot of people aren't big fans of uh, Bookface, so we're going to do what we can. Um, yes. Brooke. Thank you from over there at the uh, command command center over there. She actually posted just because, you know, I bought this miracle of sadness called uh, No Man's Sky. Even during a Steam sale, I still feel like I have buyer's remorse for it. But they announced multiplayer for No Man's Sky. Which is which cool. Which is neat. Uh, I just, I feel like... You think that it's too just far is, for redemption? Too little, too late? I think this is get obsessively broken to begin with. And then they started adding things. And I'm not sure if that's enough to really save it at this point. <coughs> Star Citizen. <coughs> Yeah, well, Star Citizen will just never release. Yeah, thanks, See, Christopher no Roberts, for stealing everybody's money and then providing no tangible product for it. No Man's Sky is like, hello, games. In order to know, it's more like no-no games. It's like I, the game doesn't exist. I wish we could get that video that's up on YouTube that shows the differences between No Man's Sky pre-E3 and uh, the, the one where it's... Do, 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 the Jurassic it shows... Park, it's like all flourished. <laughs> it's like, welcome to Jurassic Park. And then it's just a harmonica squeaking. And like, 
a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and his neck is just coming out of his back, and like his legs up and his hip bone, and he's just hobbling around. And there's flowers just dying for no reason. It was a mess. You're saying Tyrannosaurus Rex, you mean, right? Yeah, I did say it was, Tyrannosaurus it was Rex. It was kind of, it was kind of a thing. So. Yeah, I think I might have said that without even thinking, just because of how uh, applicable it was. I think that might, I think that might be a thing. Now there is a couple more games that were leaked, and some of them potentially uh, confirmed. Uh, Borderlands 3. Yes, please. Just do, some, 3. do something different and don't be on Pandora, please. Get away. Pandora is just, it's, I'm burnt out on it, dude. I can't do it anymore. Well, you know what? We'll see. The one you guys know you're going to be excited about and other people will be excited about, uh, and it's a rumor, uh, uh, the new Assassin's Creed. Based around Origins, but it's going to have, like, uh, Ancient Greece. This is not going to be a popular opinion, but I stopped caring about the Assassin's Creed series when they killed Desmond. I don't disagree, actually. I think, but I still, it's like, it's like this thing. It's like that was the emotional attachment to the game. But at the same time, it's like even if it's bad, it's like you know, it's like when you watch a, it's like when someone tells you a movie's so bad, you have to watch it just to see how bad it is. I like, feel like the Assassin's Creed like, movie. Oh no, no, that that's far too gone to even be an interest. Like Assassin's Creed movie is no, no, that's bad juju. I feel like that they could have cast Nicolas Cage as the main role for Assassin's Creed, and it would have been slightly better. John Stewart, the, uh, thoughts on Days Gone. Hmm. I'm not 100% familiar with that. I'm not either. Wow. Please explain. Uh, link us through. I would love, maybe we'll discuss it next week because we are kind of running a little short on time. Joe's going to try to look it up and see. But... I am. Oh. Wait a minute. Days Gone. Days Gone. This is, wow. I Action like... adventure game developed by Cybent Studio. Never heard of them. Sony Interactive Entertainment. Okay. I feel like we're going to have to try this. This looks in interesting. Well, it's got people. I, I can tell you, it's got <laughs> character <laughs> models of people. It includes humans. So there's a start. You're so Days Gone. I think we're going to have to look into this, and maybe we'll discuss it next week on... Uh, we'll kind of take this one and segue it to next week as we have more time to look oh, into it. Oh, it's the development studio that did Siphon Filter. I'm stoked. I don't even okay. know anything about it, if that's a, If that's the case, then so am I. That's yep. actually going to be pretty sick. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about this next live stream. Thanks okay. for the topic, John. Thank you. We've got a topic for next week for sure. Thank you, John. Um, Just Cause 4. Nobody cares as far as I'm concerned, even though Square Enix is involved. I feel like Square Enix's name, they're trying to just use it to carry everything. And Just Cause 3 was a big flaming bag of crap on someone's doorstep. I couldn't even play it just cause. <laughs> I couldn't. The bad puns are real, I swear. Yeah. And then I Splint, pun you not. Splinter Cell. It's Ubisoft. Yeah. Uh, I liked Blacklist. It just, once I started to realize it was one of those games that they clearly created an algorithm to like make the missions and map out the game, I'm like, oh, this is just filler to make me feel like I'm playing a real game. There's no storyline to it. Oh, and then I don't know why this was a deal breaker for me, but they took the voice actor as the main character, and it was the guy, and I don't know the name of the actor, but it's the guy from Starship Troopers that's missing an arm. Oh, Real okay, famous yeah, yeah, yeah. actor. He did a lot of Command and Conquer games. They took him as out of out of rotation as the voice actor, and I don't know what it is for me, but I have this huge thing with voices in, in video games. And if even if the storyline is awesome and the character and the story is enriching, if the voice actor is terrible, I can't do it. I, I just can't. I, I, I lose all interest in the game. I don't take it seriously. So when they, when they did that, I was just like, ah, it's not the same Sam Fisher. But yo, you play. Just saying. You play Launcher. It's Ubisoft, dude. Yeah, it kills frames. Uh, <laughs> it's the entire reason as to why you can't play Assassin's Creed Origins using Steam Link because of the Uplay DRM. Thanks, Ubisoft. But they do have uh. great support, I will say. Uh, Jim Weiss just came in. He said, hey, dudes, I love this setup uh, slash studio. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris Jarrett, shipping full water loops with air shipping is less than ideal. That is absolutely true. And we have spent a lot of time, a lot of R&D, a lot of development to make the best packing solutions possible to be able yes. to ship liquid-cooled systems. Yes. Otherwise, Freight only. Freight only. Yes. And on a pallet. If you if you just ship it in a box, you're asking for a really wet box with a lot of broken parts. Yeah, no. Not no. saying I speak from experience, but let's just say I it don't can know, happen. man. That sounds pretty convincing. And then then Jimmy. What's up, Jimmy? Uh, Ubisoft, Ubisoft is only good for Assassin's Creed. Yes. Far Cry, dude. Far Cry. Yeah, Far Cry. Okay. Far Cry's good. I'll give you that. But like you said, Assassin's Creed... Once he, uh, they, dude, they killed Desmond. I know. They killed. Why would you do that? He was like, you uh, had like, uh, you lost 
such a great potential to increase your cult following even further because there there are women and men, no judging, that just went crazy over Desmond and then you killed him. And maybe they were trying to do the whole like, oh, you're just gonna keep playing to see if he's gonna come back alive, we're gonna work him back into the story. No, nope. Desmond's, uh, he's killed dead. You he's not a, coming back. You and have now a man apparently, crush on Desmond, don't you? Uh, no. No, no, no. lie. I, no. I, have a, I have a man crush on Radek Yarkin. Connor from Assassin's Creed I, 3. I know, I know what it is. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Um, other than that, some really cool, uh, I guess, semi-political news. Uh, net neutrality might be being saved. Pass the Senate. Yay. I mean, all of us like to not have to pay, uh, not to save a fast lane, but be able to actually not have to pay a package price like you pay to a cable company for, hey, I want HBO or all that crap. I'm, I don't even have TV. So. I'm going to give an opposing opinion just for the sake of giving an opposing opinion, but let's just say for a sec that by removing net neutrality entirely, it does allow private companies to compete in a manner which they want to. What's to say companies like Charter and Time Warner and Spectrum do decide up, oh, you're going to pay per package, this is what you're going to do, what you're going to do, and then the idea that Elon Musk has to... to implement a satellite-only solution that would be full worldwide scaled by 2022. And because of the cost to upkeep and the amount of people that they can get to sign up for the package, it's here's your 500 gig down and, and 300 gig up package for $30 a month. 500 gig? Damn. That, that's what he was saying. He was saying one or point. Or 500 meg. Or for, no, 500 gig. Uh, 500 gig. Like, and I'm sure that's okay. a huge stretch, right? And but, the, uh, now, but now I've got to say... Uh, if Model 3 production is any sign of where uh, some of Musk's companies is going, uh, this th we might not see that in our lifetime. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, Model 3 production, he's like, we're going to build a couple thousand a week. Then he's like, never mind, a couple thousand in a few months. <laughs> I mean, once you start looking at that, and I mean, I'm not trying to down on the dude. I love at Tesla. least he's actually, doing it. I love Tesla. I at mean, least he did it. I would love to have a Tesla, but uh, and, and life. <laughs> Elon Musk. I also love eating. <laughs> Elon Musk's tweets are, are, um, are really entertaining, even though half of them are fake. <laughs> I just want a flamethrower. I'm just saying. What's wrong with that? Would they be against me bringing a flamethrower to the office if I bought one? No. You don't think so? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to hold you that. Hey, Brandon. How's it going? And Tufu. Potato, potato internet. Tufu! Well, I'm not, it's not my fault you use, like, Kmart internet. Come on, Tufu. I know. Well, it could be worse. You could be out in the boonies. You could have satellite internet where it's, like, oh, a limited no. amount of bandwidth and it's $80 a month. And you pay per, like, gig or whatever? No, it's like you have set, like... I, I have somebody in my wife's family that, that lives down and down south in the deep, deep south, and uh, it's deep, eight, deep south, deep, deep south, like really south. <laughs> and uh, it's eight gigs a month. Ouch! How do you even update a game? And she, she don't. I feel so bad for my nephew because he wants to play games. And he's like, I'm gonna download one update. Up, oh, the the data cap's gone, and it goes to like. 500 kilobits a second after eight gigs. Uh, yeah, remember we tried playing, <laughs> we uh, tried playing PUBG with him, and uh, he just kept, just kept lagging. He'd just be like running in a field, and there'd be like network issue. Network and then you'd lagging. see him just kind of. Ee! Yeah, you'd just see him on the map like moving a little bit, like just moving and then stop. Like, hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm lagging. Okay, I'm back. I'm lagging. It's it's oh. awful. So I mean, if if, if, hands. if Elon Musk. <laughs> If Elon Musk or anybody else does come out with satellite internet that can provide that amount of bandwidth and they don't decide to be jerks about it and cap it and, <laughs> and give you tier options, that would be great. Oh, goodness. Robert Miser. Kyle would love the flamethrower. Kyle, I'm going to ask Kyle about this when we're done. Why would he love the flamethrower? What, what motives does Kyle have going that he would need a flamethrower? Does he I have experience like with a flamethrower? Are we talking like matches? Like he, he would be progressing from matches in a spray can? What are we talking here? This sounds interesting. Is flamethrower like a, a baby name for something close to him? I feel like I feel like this is, has a whole other story and a whole other rabbit hole. I'm not sure we want to go down. It does. Maybe we'll bring Kyle on the live stream at some point. That in would the be future. interesting. And we'll have him explain why he would like the flamethrower. I'll tell you what, guys. We are actually running out of time, so we've got a topic we'll carry over to next week, and it's some more kind of remnants of uh, GPP speculation. We don't have enough time to really cover it right now. Not we'll like it matters, that over really. To next week, but there is a few reminders I wanted to run by you guys because we have some promos that are now live. One we teased last week. We have our VR promo, which has a ton of VR and non-VR games for i7, i9 based systems, and then we have our uh, <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> i5, i7 systems. <laughs> Then we have our regular gaming, uh, we have our regular Intel gaming bundle, both from our friends at uh, Intel, for with Final Fantasy 15 and Warhammer Vermintide 2, our II, or however you want to say it, because once again, Roman numerals suck, and I'm bad at them. 
Um, basically, most 8th gen and i799 uh, Extreme Edition desktop CPUs, um, it's going to be ending at the end of July. So yeah, if you're interested yeah, in those yeah. games, please uh, drop us a line. Let us know if you need any help getting a system configured. Uh, I'm any, here for help, too. Joe is here. I actually, if you contact me about it, I will forward you to Joe. I don't sell stuff. I just uh, help try to make cool videos and I work with Joe uh, on doing cool things. I build and fix things. I just break things and then Joe has to fix them. Mm. It's a good relationship. I mean, it's, it's a balancing act, but it works. I think I'd have to stand more toward the center of the whole balancing board because I'm a big guy. That's I okay. Mean, you can carry me on your shoulders because I'm just kind of like Voltron. What, are you going to be like a Joe backpack? No, I'm just big like Voltron, dude. <laughs> but that means you'd have to dock somehow. Or... Boop, boop, boop. Wait, never mind. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for joining us. Be sure to join us every Friday. A pleasure entertaining you, ladies and gentlemen. 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 2.30. So 2.30. Two, three, zero. That's 2.30. And we love What's you guys. Rome? What's that in Roman numerals? Get out. <laughs> I don't know what 230 is in Roman numerals. Are you kidding me? We love you guys. Um, please join us 2.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time or 11.30 in the spry morning over there in uh, West Coast. And we look forward to uh, sharing some more cool tech news, talk about gadgets, talk about games, and anything else you guys want to talk about. Drop us some questions, and we will definitely... Uh, See what we can do to uh, dig up some information. We'll dig our way through uh, all these topics. <laughs> and hopefully Shannon won't dig himself another hole like the last two sessions. It's okay. I'm used to it. Um, otherwise, guys, look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, keep stay tuned to our channel. Stay tuned to all of our social media so that we can uh, talk about, so you can keep track of what we're talking about and when we're going to be going live, when we're going live soon with the gaming, things like that. We're going to be streaming some cool gaming content, showing some new games for you guys. Uh, Joe, myself included, along with uh, many other people, Internal AVA Direct, we're going to have a lot of fun gaming with you guys and just for you guys. Mm. So be sure to stay tuned in so that we can uh, do some awesome new stuff coming in the future. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Have a nice weekend, guys. Thank you.